In today's video, we're going to be shooting from San Francisco, California. So we've actually been here for three days. So today is actually our final day. We've already spent a couple of days uh, exploring the city and also exploring Mount Tamapaus. I still don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that correctly, but at least we can call it Mount Tam for short. Right now we are on one of the peaks, I think, in the Marin Headlands. And this is Battery Spencer, which is where you can get one of the best views of the world famous Golden Gate Bridge. I really enjoyed my time in San Francisco here. The city is absolutely beautiful. The streets are just so steep. You're always going all the way up or all the way down. But, you know, putting that aside, it's truly a beautiful city. You want to know what kind of things we got up to? Let's take a look. All right, guys, I'm in San Francisco, baby. Still can't believe I'm here. Just uh, popping in Chinatown to uh, see my cousins from around the world. No trip to San Francisco would be complete without um, a visit to Chinatown, right? Right, so one of the famous things to eat uh, in San Francisco is apparently this uh, sourdough clam chowder, I think. Never tried it before in my life and apparently one of the best places uh, to do it in Budan's or Budin's Bakery so um, yeah really looking forward to um, trying this uh, so yeah let's, um, let's see how it goes alright guys we got it the chow powder sourdough cheers So we just finished Boudin's Bakery and its famous clam chowder sourdough. It was nice, nice experience. Not something I want to buy again, but um, definitely worth going for a first time. And right there in the distance, where I'm pointing to there, that's the famous Alcatraz prison, I think. Pretty cool. I don't think we're going to visit it on this instance, as uh, it's not really my thing, but um, there it is anyway. Right, so that's Fisherman's Wharf. I'm not going to do um, too much today given we already did a seven hour drive from Los Angeles um, all the way over to San Fran, San Francisco I should say. Especially as we've got a very early start um, tomorrow and uh, the day after that to be fair. I'm going to be doing some more hikes so definitely want to um, get up early to do that. I think the plan is grab like an early dinner and then we'll just have an early night I guess. So yeah, I'll speak to you later. Right, good morning guys. It is um, 8 o'clock in the morning right now. We got up about 6.30 a.m. this morning because we were going to drive to Mount Tamal Pass or Mount Tam uh, for short. We decided to drive quite early today because of two reasons. So the first reason was that apparently this um, supposed to be quite limited parking at the east peak of the mountain. So I decided to come here early to make sure that I got a space but as you can see this car park is completely empty. I am the first and only person at the mountain right now so um, yeah good news anyway uh, at least at least we got a spot and the second reason is I wanted to get here because I want to explore a lot of the different hiking trails here. The drive here um, from San Francisco driving up to the mountain you know, you're weaving your way up the mountain and it's just incredible the views are incredible being at like the top or being like on a mountain top at 8 a.m. in the morning and it's just absolutely still quiet I can just hear a bird it's just this is yeah this is what you well, this is certainly what I live for. This stuff, I 
I love being in the outdoors, love being in the mountains. And uh, yeah, this just makes me really, really happy. So uh, yeah, I can't wait to start exploring the um, various hiking trails um, before I'll then try to find a nice spot to discuss some poker hands for you guys. So yeah, just gonna leave it here for now. I'm just gonna go for a little walk and I'll catch up with you later. I'm pretty glad it's not uh, as cold as I thought it would be because today, for the first day in my whole trip, and we're actually wearing clothes to leave everything that I've brought with me to the States. I've got like one, two, three layers. Got my coat, which I then just put back in my bag. Um, so yeah, I'm glad it's not as uh, cold as uh, I thought it might, it might be uh, being up in the mountains. So far, we had a little look at Fern Creek Trail and it seemed like it was going all the way back down the mountain. So halfway, I just decided to come back up and do the most popular trails, I guess. So I think there's two that I want to do. Well, at least two. These are like the two main ones, I think, at Mount Tam. The first is the Verna Dunshi Trail, which is what I think we're doing now, which is just like a one mile loop. And then there's also the Plank Walk Trail as well. And I think that's the one that takes you up to the peak. And I'm not sure if it's the third one or if it's the same as the second one. But then there's also the Lookout Tower, which is all the way at the top as well. So yeah, those are the main ones uh, that I definitely want to uh, do uh, before we leave here. Right, so now we've arrived at the first official, I believe, scenic point or viewing point. Don't know if there's a name for this, but this is pretty damn awesome. All right, so we've just made the second significant point of interest, and that's the Mount Tam Lookout Tower. Nice. This is just amazing. All these different places that I've been through, been to so far, um, have been different and beautiful in their own right. To be fair, it's quite hard to compare. But either way, I'm just uh, very, very happy to be here. Right. So we've already done a little bit of hiking already, explored a few trails and uh, soaked in quite a lot of the views already, as you can see um, behind me. And uh, just as I was chilling out, I thought I'd come and talk to you about some of these poker hands from a session I played earlier last week. Right, so let's dive into the action. First hand of the session. So this was very early on in our session. I think it was in like the first 15, 20 minutes since we sat down. So the action folds to the button, who is um, a regular player, and he opens the button to $15. The small blind then calls the, door, uh, calls the 15 and then we look down in the big blind with pocket queens. We all started the hand with $500, so 100 big blinds. Uh, so with that in mind, I decided to put in the squeeze to $75 from the big blind. And then the button then thinks for just a little while before making the call and then the small blind gets out the way. So we are now heads up to the flop, which comes king, 10, 9 with two clubs. And I don't think we have a club in our hand. It's not really the type of hand and, and the spot that we actually want to start building the pot. So with that in mind, we start with a check and the villain uh, decides to quickly check back. So we are now off to the turn, which comes an offsuit three. So I think now in this spot, we definitely have a very clear delay C bet here. It's very unlikely that we would beat on the flop as I think most of his two pairs and sets and even maybe some King X at some frequency uh, would decide to stab flop. So we decide to delay C bet to $75 and then Tvillin then wastes little time before making the call. 
we are off to the river card which comes uh, an offsuit 10. I don't really like the 10 because the villain can have a lot of medium strength hands like queen 10 suited or queen 10 off or jack 10 so I decide to check it over to him and then he thinks for a little while and then he decides to bet $180 I don't really love the 10. I mean, I think that's the only hand that we lose to here, which is a 10x hand. I would fully expect him to check back um, his king x hands, to be fair, and also his uh, one pair hands, like um, like an 8x or a 9x, um, that now beats our ace queens and ace jacks. So when he decides to bet, he now has polarized himself to complete air and 10x hands. I thought there was enough bluffs in his range there to make the call here at some frequency of the time. So that's what I do. I decide to make the call and unfortunately this time Villain shows 10-8 off for a rivet trips. So yeah, it kind of sucks, um, but I perceive this Villain to be capable of bluffing in the spot, which is why I made the call. <laughs> So moving swiftly on to the next hand, there is an under the gun limp, and then we look down in early position with two red jacks. So definitely a hand that we want to start uh, opening here. So we make it $25 to go, and then action falls to the hijack who makes the call, the button calls, and under the gun calls. So we are now going four ways to the flop, uh, which comes 10, nine, seven, uh, two diamonds, and we have the jack of diamonds in our hand. Ashley checks to me, and I think on in this spot uh, with this hand, and also being like four ways to the flop, it's not really a spot where we want to uh, necessarily start building the pot here, especially as we do have um, a very vulnerable hand on a very dynamic board. And so with that in mind, we decide to start with the check, and the action then checks to the button who puts out a bet of $35. Under the gun makes the call, so we decide to continue with the just call just to see how the action develops behind us and also to see how the board develops as well. So we make the call and then I think the hijack then folds so we are now three ways to the turn which comes an offsuit five. Under the gun checks and I decide to check and now button decides to check back. I think as soon as Button decides to check back, he no longer has like us beat. I think if he did have um, like a really strong hand, like a two pair plus hand, or even maybe, even maybe like an ace 10, I think these hands would all be betting. So with that in mind, um, I'm pretty confident we have the best hand going to the river. But then the river, unfortunately, comes a queen of diamonds. So now the front door flush completes even though we have the jack of diamonds which really really sucks the under the gun checks and i of course decide to check back and then button decides to bet 85 dollars already not loving it here and not really looking to make this call especially when under the gun also decides to call uh, button's bet so we are unfortunately forced uh, to fold this hand and then button tables king seven of diamonds and under the gun had eight five of diamonds for a rivet flush as well really really sucks especially as uh, we had the jack of diamonds in our hand that the front door flush door had to complete um so yeah we're going to be losing this hand <laughs> in this next very very fun hand this is a limped pot five ways and we are in the small blind with five four offsuit so of course um, we are going to check our option and big blind also checks back too so we are now five ways to the flop which comes six three deuce with two hearts. We flop the nuts here. So we start with a check as we would do with our entire range, uh, praying for uh, to see some bets behind us. And then Big Blind decides to bet $20. One of the guys in the middle position also decides to make the call and there's a couple of folds behind and then the action's now back on us. Effective stacks, we have about um, six, I think we have about $600. But all the players in this hand have at least $500 here to start the hand. In this spot, facing a bet and a call, we definitely want to start raising up here. So we raised up to $115, hoping to see some action behind us. And then Big Blind decides to call 115. Action is now back on the middle position and he thinks for quite a little while before then jamming his stack in for like three or $400. I'm absolutely loving it at this spot. At this point, I just think we have a very clear move here, which is to re-jam all in. And I think what's great also about this hand is that we also block like uh, the five, four of hearts, just so we can avoid getting free rolled. 
So um, no brainer here, we rip it in uh, for like, you know, four or $500 for the rest of our stack. And then Big Blind is like YOLO and he just rips in the rest of his stack as well. So we are now three ways all in for like a 1.6 or 1.7K pop. And I'm just praying for like no heart or don't pair the board. And then the turn card, the dealer puts out the queen of hearts, which I'm pretty much thinking I'm already dead now. And then the river also comes another heart. So now we've flopped the nuts to now rivet like a five high flush. Um, so we are not very confident at all, obviously, about our hands. So we table it and sure enough, the big blind had six, eight of hearts for a flopped pair and flush draw. The other player who was all in as well, he didn't show, but he later told us that he also flopped a nut straight with a five, four as well. So um, yeah, pretty disastrous hand. But, you know, we got in with the nuts, so, you know, no complaints are in, but still nonetheless really sucks that we had to lose um, such a big pot. I think he took pair, he first shot, but you, 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 you don't have pair. I'm not here. So after reloading our stack, just a few orbits later, there is a raise from under the gun to $20. And we look down in late position with pocket kings. Fingers crossed, I'm really hoping we can win some of our money back here and get a bit of a rebate. Pretty standard three bet here, so we make it $70. Action then folds back to under the gun, who thinks for a little while before making the call. I kind of had a read uh, on this player that when he opens under the gun and then he calls my three bet that he does have a very strong hand. I'm putting villain squarely on a pretty strong range here on like tens plus and ace queen, ace, ace queen suited plus. So going to the flop, it comes 10, seven, four, three hearts and we don't have a heart in our hand. The villain checks it over to us. I decide to go for a C bet. So that's what I do. I put in a bet of $70, then villain, then thinks for a little while before making the call. So we are now heads up to the turn, which comes another brick. Villain now checks it over to us. I think when he calls my C bet on the flop, I think his range is now firmly defined as ace king, ace queen with a heart slash over pairs uh, with or without a heart. I think to be fair, my range is probably the same as villain's range here. So I too would have ace kings, ace queens with a heart and also over pairs. So when he checks it over to us, I think we only have one um, bet sizing here. And so we decide to rip it in and jam the rest of our stack in. Villain then thinks for a little while. So I'm glad we faded the snap call. He asks for a count. So at this point, I'm pretty confident we have the best hand and he most likely has an overpair and not an ace king, ace queen type hand. He decides to make the call and we're off to the river, which I'm praying no heart, no heart, no heart. Unfortunately, this time it bricks out. We show our hand and villain is not very pleased because he had pocket queens. So yeah, very um, happy to uh, drag in this pot. <coughs> Right, so at this point, the action has been going pretty wild. Uh, there's been quite a lot of blind raises under the gun, like uh, we've been doing rounds of blind raises just to uh, spark a bit of action. So in this next hand, uh, it was my turn for the blind raise. So we blind raised under the gun to $10. The action then falls to the cutoff, who puts in a small three bet to $25. Button then calls, small blind calls, big blind calls, and then action's now on us. We look down at 10, nine suited. So we decide to join the party with a call. So we are now five ways to the flop, which comes pretty damn good, actually. It comes jack, nine, five, two clubs. We have flopped ourselves a pair and flush draw. Action checks to us, and we also decide to check as we would do our entire range. Action is now back on the pre-flop razor, who decides to do something quite odd. He decides to overbet to $150. Action then falls to the button, who's already quite short. I think he has like $165 left. He wastes little time before jamming the rest of his stack in. Action now falls back on us, and now we have a decision. I think what kind of complicates the spot a bit more is that we face an overbet. I had um, already played a couple of hands with this player, and I did have a read on him, which was you know, when he overbets the flop here, I don't think he ever has the, str the very strongest hands possible in this spot. So hands like top set or middle set or any set for that matter. So I think most likely he has the next category down, uh, which is like a, a strong top pair, or at least like a top pair, like an ace jack, or most likely like an overpair. 
and I absolutely don't put Villain on like a strong flush draw as I don't think um, this player plays uh, these hands in this way. So with that in mind, I really felt like I did have some fold equity here if I decided to raise. So with that in mind, after questioning how much is left in Villain's stack, we decide to apply some big stack pressure here and we decide to jam the rest of our stack in and put him to the test. Now the cutoff is clearly not happy with the situation. He just doesn't really put, give me credit uh, to be making a play um, as the one I'm doing right now. Pretty confident slash um, uh, hoping as well that he doesn't call, but to be fair, even if he does make the call, I'm pretty happy to get it in with this hand on this flop. So after tanking for quite a while, uh, villain then decides to fold and he open folds pocket aces so yeah very very happy to see that and now i'm very happy to get it in now especially with, with his um dead money as well and so we are now off to the river the turn comes a brick and then the river comes another club so i was really confident that we won the hand uh, but then villain on the button then shows king deuce of clubs for the higher flush we played it so well we managed to fold out the best hand got it in versus the worst hand and we got sucked out on. We're gonna lose another big pot here. So yeah, things are really not um, going our way in this session. In this final interesting hand of my session, Ashen folds to us in middle position and we look down at Jack eight suited. I think in this spot, especially on this table, and given stack depths, I think Jack-8 suited would be close to the bottom of my opening range here. You know, I think Jack-7 suited would be a clear fold. Jack-9 suited would be a clear open. And I think Jack-8 suited is kind of right on the line. So we decide in this case to open up to $20. Action then folds to the cutoff who puts in a three bet to $65. And then the small blind, who was the villain in the previous hand who folded aces to us, he then tanks for quite a little while before making the call. Action's now back on us, and I think in this spot we have a pretty clear call. So that's what we decide to do. We make the call, and now we are three ways to the flop, which comes 10, 9, 7, rainbow. Does this hand start sounding a bit familiar to the 5-4 hand we played earlier in the session? So Ashen's on the small blind, who is tanking for quite a while, and then he decides again to overbet to $230 into a pot of like 180. So effective stacks, we both have like six, I think, or six or seven hundred dollars, I think something around that mark. So what to do when you flop the nuts uh, in a multi-way pot facing a huge overbet? And this villain decides to now overbet on this board texture. You know, I don't you know, he clearly has a hand like Jack's or Queen's beat. So for that line of logic, I'm putting Villain on a two pair plus, uh, but most likely a set. As to be fair, I don't think um, Villain would be flatting 10-9 suited on the small blind here. So we decide to make the call, uh, and then Action's now on the cutoff, who doesn't think for too long before making the fold. So we are now heads up to the turn, and I'm just praying to please don't pair the board. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, the turn comes a queen. Now, Villain, very surprisingly, decides to slow down with a check, which doesn't really make um, any sense to me whatsoever, given the size of the pot is now like five, six hundred dollars. And I, I think I have like three or four hundred dollars left in my stack. We jam the rest of our stack in for like three hundred and fifty odd dollars. And then Villain now, actually, funnily enough, go, decides to go into the tank for a bit. Pretty surprised, um, given the line he's taken, you know, this should be a snap call. But anyhow, he decides to take a little bit of time before then making the call so we are now playing another like one like 1.2k pot with the nuts going to the river and i'm just praying god don't pair the board and then the river comes another queen so we table our hand and then villains like is, is ecstatic uh, with that river and he shows pocket tens for the rivered full house. This has uh, been a pretty horrendous uh, session for us. I think we are down like almost 2K at this spot. Yeah, started to, to get a little bit affected, uh, I think at this spot, given uh, at this time, given we'd already gotten our money in with the nuts uh, at least a couple of times and we just lost um, some huge pots. This was the last interesting hand. And this was also the last hand we played as shortly after this, uh, we just took our remaining $100 and went straight to the cage. We decided to cut our session just a little short.
All right, guys, just um, finished my session just in the parking lot, just trying to clear my mind a little. Having come from the best week since we started grinding at the Commerce, we've had the single worst session since we've started playing at the Commerce. We're down like almost 2K. Nothing was really working out today, so it was just a really, really um, frustrating session. So yeah, I decided to just cut my session just a little short because I'm um, just feeling a little bit affected mentally from, yeah, getting it in with um, the nuts and uh, and uh, just losing massive pots. So um, yeah, just gonna drive home now and uh, just brush it off. And uh, when I wake up the next day, I'll be back to normal. So yeah, hopefully um, I'll be able to recover from this later on this week. So yeah, thanks for listening and um, I'll speak to you next time. Right, so we've just hiked back down from the lookout tower, Ugh! back to base camp. And uh, just chatting to a local about the um, the cloud, like how I wanted to be above the clouds. And um, so I, was, I stood corrected. Uh, it was actually the mist or the fog, the famous fog in San Francisco called, actually, I think it's called Carl the Fog, that I want and not clouds. You generally see it early in the morning. And I was like, I was the first one on the mountain. And I couldn't see any of the fog. So yeah, pretty sad about that but um hey not not much i can do about that i think we're just gonna hang out here um for maybe an hour or two hours more um secretly praying that <laughs> secretly pay, pray for the fog to magically appear out of nowhere before we'll start um driving back to the land of civilization i think the plan is i think we're gonna go to uh see more of the city um i hate ashbury so yeah i think that'll be the next time i'll speak to you all right guys we are in Haight ashbury known as the uh, hippie area of um san francisco i believe probably reminds me a little bit of camden town perhaps in uh from london all right so we just got off the cable car eight bucks for a three minute ride. Bit of a lifesaver given I've been walking like two hours already today. Right, so just made it back to my hotel after a long day of walking. So just time to chill out a bit with the complimentary tea and biscuits before going out to try one of the legendary unmissable mission burritos so yeah we're gonna have that um, later on for dinner tonight and then we're gonna have an early night so yeah let's chill out all right so we've just ticked off another must do or shall i say must eat when in San Francisco, which is to eat a mission style burrito. Granted, I'm no burrito connoisseur. However, I will say that that was probably the best burrito I've had in my life. Burrito was massive. They definitely did not skimp out on the ingredients. It was just wrapped very well. The tortilla was really nice. And uh, yeah, very, very filling. It has my um, seal of approval. Definitely come get a mission style burrito if you ever find yourself in San Francisco. So yeah, we had a truly nightmare session uh, to start the week last week. We lost about 1.8K in that session, uh, which was pretty horrific. After that session, um, I was just looking to break even for the rest of the week. Having gone from the single worst session, we've since also had the single biggest winning session since the grinding at the commerce. I think a few days later, we round up the stack of nearly 4K, which resulted in a profit of about almost three and a half thousand dollars. And as a result, we've managed to end the week up 2.2K for the week. So I am extremely happy and extremely grateful for the results. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I've enjoyed the views uh, since, I've, uh, since I arrived in San Francisco. Tomorrow, we're going to be leaving. We're going to have a 6 a.m. start and we are going to start 
the long drive back all the way to Los Angeles. Thanks guys for tuning in. I really hope you enjoyed watching the video and I'll speak to you next time when I'm back in the OC.